Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Project Ozone 3 in Kappa Mode. So last episode, we decided that we needed to get ourselves a lot of iridium. And I went through all of the crushed netherrack that we had, and we ended up getting two full stacks of iridium, the crushed iridium ore. And I smelted that, and I started making our ME controllers. That was the last thing that was holding us back. So I have made this many controllers, so that was three on this side, three on this side, plus an additional two, so I've made eight of them. But we were originally going to make the entire top ring out of the controllers, and I would like to make two more, but we just did not have the iridium. So I just got back from the nether. Uh, I leveled up my hammer twice. I can fulfill mighty deeds with my cobalt sledgehammer, and my cobalt sledgehammer and I are living legends. So yes, we have like five modifiers available on that, but it doesn't really need any modifiers. I mean, you can't really fortune when you're crushing netherrack or whatever, so that doesn't really matter. And this thing mines fast enough, and with vein miner, yeah, I mean, you don't really need to put all sorts of haste on there. It already goes fast enough, you just have to break the one block. Anyway, so I filled up my dank knoll full of crushed netherrack. I think I had like 93,000 of it or something. I was like, okay, that seems like enough. Uh, and then I decided we should use the docking station. So I placed down the translocator. I placed the docking station on top of the translocator. And then I tried placing the one on the bottom and it wouldn't go. And I was like, why isn't it going? Yeah, you can't place that translocator on the bottom of the docking station until you place your uh, dank knoll inside the docking station and then it will attach. So a thing that you gotta do is you can uh, shift right click on the dink knoll. Let's actually take this out of here. Do I shift right click it? Okay. So you shift right click on here, you choose whichever slot you want. So like if I want to extract sand, I do a sh uh, alt left click, and then you can do a control click according to the tooltip to change extraction mode. So if we do control click, uh, it's hard to see, but it says extract all but one, extract all but 16, extract all but 64, extract all, and then do not extract. So those are your options right there by doing a control click. Um, I set the crushed netherrack to extract all but one, and then the translocators are able, able to extract all of it, except for that one slot, into this barrel here. So yeah, we're currently processing this. We saw that last episode, how we can tick accelerate this thing and it just goes super, super fast. Now we could expand this out and do like a five by five or even bigger if we really wanted to get crazy with this. But I feel like for what we're doing, this sifting and the amount of stuff that we need to sift, this is just fine. Uh, so we are up to an additional four stacks of this, which would get us one stack of the iridium ore piece. We had twice this amount uh, before I started making those enemy controllers. So I think this is actually gonna be enough right now to do what we wanted to do. So I'll go ahead and grab these. We'll make a stack of the iridium ore chunk and we can just go ahead and process that in here and that doubles our ore. Very good, so now we got a lot more iridium. So the iridium does have to be turned into iridium plates. I'll just do one stack and I think that's gonna be enough. So we'll put it over here. And you also gotta make sure you don't do it with the gear working die because you can in fact turn iridium into iridium gears. I didn't see if there was a recipe for that but I did see that placing the iridium gear in the induction smelter with a piece of sand got you the uh, four iridium ingots back. So I ended up having to do that as well. Okay. So while that is going over there, we can take a look at some other things. So uh, put that in here, iridium. Yeah, so now we're up to 82. We have 32 plates remaining. Um, so each one of these imming controllers requires a dense energy cell and the dense energy cell requires eight of the energy cells, which requires four fluex dust and four certus of some type, charge, regular or pure. And then the energy acceptor, which requires the iridium and the quartz fiber. It looks like it does have to be a regular fluix crystal. You can't use pure here. Uh, so energy acceptor. We have one in the system. I think that was the one we made originally. So there is eight of those. I guess I need a, another half a stack to make eight more for another controller that I wanted to do. That should be enough here. Okay, so we'll place... 
those like that. We'll do eight more of these. Awesome. Then we'll do these. Oh, we need the Fluex. Okay, so we are out of Fluex dust. And I think it's half a stack per. So let's just tell the system to make like a hundred of them. So that should be pretty quick. I did add some speed upgrades over to our extraction pipe over there <laughs> because that was going a little slow. Uh, and then we don't have a way to automatically tell the system to crush this. So I just have to come over here to the pulverizer and let it do its thing. All right, so we got ourselves two more Emmy controllers. We're just going to go ahead and replace these two blocks with them. Like so, there we go. So now we got plenty of faces on our Emmy controller so far to start doing some P2P and getting lots of channels that we can move around. Now, another thing that I wanted to do was use one of these dense energy cells. I just made another one of these just to store extra energy. Each one of these Emmy controller blocks do add a little bit of extra power buffer to the system, but like having one of these dense energy cells on here adds so much more that when we shift click items into the network, the system shouldn't turn off anymore like it has been. You see right there as it was powering this thing up, the system turned off even. Yeah, that should eliminate that. This is going to be part of the energy buffer for the network. So hopefully, hopefully that doesn't happen anymore. And that's the Ender Spectre. So I think that is the highest tier, one of these. Uh, we might also add in one of the energy acceptors and just put it on one of our cables somewhere else so we're not taking up a uh, full face of one of the controllers. I haven't decided if we're going to do that or not. But anyway, uh, now that we have this done, we can look at getting into P2Ps. Yeah. So that'll be a lot more useful for running cables around, a lot more um, resource friendly, and it's just better overall for moving large amount of channels around. So we want to do P2Ps and these cost what? I haven't even looked at the recipe. So that is the engineering processor, Fluex and iron. So that's really not that bad. Uh, we have 54 engineering processors, so we should just be able to do this. And we have plenty of the pure. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do it. So we need, I think it is five for the controller. I think we have five faces available the way I do that. Maybe, maybe we can do six. Um, and then we're going to need a P2P for everywhere else on the network that we're going to run these channels to. So we're going to want quite a few more of those. So I'll just do like 12 of them. That should be fine. So we want any dense cables. Okay. And then we could also color the cables. Now I do believe the, uh, cables that I was running around, I had colored black. Yeah. So we can just do black, I suppose. I mean, that's a nice contrasting color with the white base. So we'll just do that. So we'll grab some ink sacks like so, and some of these like, so, you know what? I'm going to do multiple of those. I like having, um, all the cables that we run around the base that are specific for P2Ps to be a colored cable. Uh, otherwise the Fluex cables touch the other cables and you don't know what the cable is used for. And it's just better to keep them separated overall. Uh, another thing that I did forget to do, we want to make cable anchors and these, uh, you have to use a quartz cutting knife, either certus or nether with any type of ingot. I don't know. I guess we'll just do this one and then we'll use iron since, uh, iron is pretty cheap. We'll just use that entire, Ooh, I guess we had another certus knife in there. I didn't realize that. Okay. So we got plenty of these cable anchors. Okay. So a stack is more than enough. Cool. So now we are going to be disconnecting this. Yeah, this needs to go. That was a temporary thing just to get our auto crafting going. Uh, so the way that I like doing this, we're going to put a cable linker here, cable linker here. We're not going to use those faces. And then we're going to use these smart cables here. Um, yeah, the smart cable is going to touch here. And then we are going to separate each one of these cables with one of these cable anchors. So they are not touching each other. All right, then we put P2P tunnels on these. You don't actually have to do it this way. You can directly put a P2P tunnel on the controller and it works exactly the same way. Now, the reason why I do it this way is because you can see on the tool tip there, when we're looking at this cable, it says zero of 32 channels. So you know exactly how many channels are going into the P2P. 
If you do it this way, you save a little bit of resource, but then you have no idea how many channels you're using. So I do it this way. You do lose like a few faces of your ME controller depending on your setup, but in my opinion, I think it's better overall. So that's the way I do it. Um, and then we also need to connect our P2P uh, tunnels and have them go into the controller here. So we need a few more ME cables. A uh, glass cable, these. We already have the black ones and that's what I want to use. Okay, so we will do, I guess we'll just connect it right here. So this P2P tunnel is connecting right into this ME controller here so we can take a cable off any part of our network like this particular cable and put a P2P over there and connect this one over there. Yep, so that's the way this is going to work. Now again, I like to make sure that our cables only connect at one point. So we will put a cable linker here so this cable doesn't connect into this interface or uh, this ME controller. It only connects over on this side. Okay, so now we have our P2P set up here. These are their permanent home. We're never going to move them. Everything is set. So whenever we uh, set this frequency, we can know that this one is never going to move. So we can use that over here and know that that middle one will always be for our auto crafting or whatever. Uh, but in order for us to like do that, we also have to make ourselves a memory card. So a memory card, pretty inexpensive, and this thing can be used as many times as you want. All right, so memory card. So the way this is going to work, we're actually going to use this one right here on the left for this auto crafting. And we'll probably use this one on the right for this auto crafting over here when we eventually get that far. So I'll do a shift right click on here. So, oh no, I'm sorry. No, shift right click. Why is it not working? Memory card clear. Oh, is it because I have something in my offhand? Maybe shift right click. Okay. New device configuration created and copied to memory card. So you can see on the tool tip at the top, it says it now has a frequency. This one does not because it is not connected to anything. And also you can see there's a color coding on the back here. So you get a visual, not only from the tool tip, but like it looks different. Okay, so now that we have that color coding and we can see the frequency, we can, uh, let's see, we want to get rid of this cable here. Okay, and we're going to get rid of this cable as well. So this, when we have uh, this fully set up with all the interfaces, we're going to have 32 channels used here. So we can't have our 1K crafting storage on this. So we're going to have to find a new home. So we just need to put a P2P tunnel here and then we can right click it to paste those settings over here. So this P2P tunnel knows that it's going to spe be speaking to this one. Now we just need to connect this to our controller. So until we get the controller completely done, we're just going to connect it like this. So that should get the P2P power. And once this thing gets powered up, it should be able to say, hey, I got new connections, and then I'll start reporting that it's using those connections. So it says it's using eight channels, and this one over here, in just a moment when it speaks to it, will say that it is using eight channels as well. And then all of the channels from that are being used through this ME controller block right here. It does take a minute sometimes, there it goes. Eight of 32 channels. So yeah, these channels from this face are going through this P2P, into the controller, and then we are extracting a channel to this P2P to get these over here. Yep, that's the way that works. Uh, anyway, so most of the stuff on our network are gonna be set up that way. We're just going to use a P2P here, have a cable go to wherever we want, put a, a P2P over at the other end, connect them up, and then we can have 32 channels wherever. But yeah, we gotta get these main cables running and normally I run dense cables just so we can have 32 P2Ps without having to worry about any other connections interfering. All right, so I just swapped out these ME dense smart cables with green ones. We are using green as our normal channels throughout the base. The black cables are gonna be for P2P, so it's very obvious which ones are P2P and which ones have our normal channels that the P2Ps are outputting, right? 
So everywhere that there is black cable, we know that is just specifically going to terminate in a P2P. And then we'll have green uh, dense smart cables followed by green glass cables off of it. So yep, uh, this normal line that we had over here was just running P2Ps all the way over for our one single channel <laughs> so we can make our pure crystals. But now that we have this dense smart cable over here, we have 32 channels available over at our machine area to start doing some more auto crafting. And that is really, really what we're looking for. Um, I did end up putting our 1K crafting store just touching our ME controller right here for now. We will find a better spot for it a little bit later once we get some more automations going and we can freely make all these things and it doesn't really matter to us. Yeah, we'll find a better location for it. Like we might just stick it over here on the floor or I don't know, whatever. Uh, I guess another thing I could replace this one with green dense cables. Actually, I have exactly eight. So let's go and do that as well. Since these are just carrying regular channels, just to keep with our theme and we know exactly what every single cable, whoops, every single cable on our base is. And there we go, yep. So we'll have to do that same thing on the other side. I'll just have to dye that one green, but that's really just to mark the location. That's not doing anything at the moment. Um, but yeah, now that we have our normal cables green, our ME terminals over here are green. So yeah, that's kind of cool. I like it. Uh, I figured that the green would go kind of good as like a secondary color to our base, especially since we have a lot of green areas around. I thought it just made a lot of sense. So one of the next things that I'd like to do is start getting our auto crafting online and start making things that are going to make our life easier. So currently over at our machine area, we are using these hardened flux ducts. And I think these only transfer like 4,000 RF per tick or something. Uh, I like to upgrade those to the conduits from Ender IO, but in Kappa mode, or at least in Project O zone, uh, it's a little expensive. So we do conduit. If we look at these, like if we wanted to make the Ender Energy Conduit, this is generally the the best one. There's better ones in this pack because you get the stellar ones. We could just go up to like essentially infinite. Um, so the Ender Energy Conduit are the ones that I want to make. In order to make those, you need the en Energetic Silver Energy, which requires enhanced energy, which requires electrum and silver and energy and copper and gold and aluminum and iron and crude. <sighs> so it's kind of a big chain. So I went ahead and I made the patterns for all of these things. So we have all of those made all the way up to the Ender Energy Conduit, including the Conduit Binder Composite. Now, in order for us to do this, we need a way to craft the Ender Binder composite. So we're going to automate our furnace here, our Zenith furnace. We're going to get rid of our slightly larger chest. We're going to replace that with an interface, and then we're going to have to put an interface on the top of this thing or on the back or whatever, something that we can push items into this furnace. It'll do its smelting operation, and then we'll extract it back into an interface. So really what we need to do, let's make a recipe for an interface, because I don't think we've done that yet. Uh, that's going to be pretty important for all of our future auto crafting. So interface and an interface is made. Whoops, I had this set up the wrong way. An interface is made this way. So that is the basic control circuits with the formation and annihilation core. Okay, so now we know how to make one of those. We need to know how to make these cores I'm pretty sure we don't have those on auto craft. Yeah, no auto craft here. So to make those, we do one of these and then we do one of those. Cool. Uh, hold on a second. So that's using Certus Quartz and this one is using Nether Quartz. Can you use any quartz there? Is it just the, is it just this has changed? No, it does require the specific quartz. Okay. So I wasn't sure about that. So that's three more recipes that we have here just to do that. Um, I think that should be okay for now. We can check this recipe out here in a moment. So let's place this, this, and this in here. I still need to make an interface terminal so we don't have to come down there, downstairs to place those. We can just right click a little thing here and place them from upstairs. We'll do that soon. Um, so now that we have that, can we make an interface? I want to make one of these. Okay, so it looks like it knows how to do things, but we are missing Fluex dust. So we don't know how to make Fluex dust. 
and we are missing basic control circuits. So basic control circuit requires a transistor with redstone and a metallurgic infuser. But now we're starting to get to the point where we need to uh, do a few different things here. Either we can use one metallurgic infuser. Well, no, no, we're going to want to make multiple metallurgic infusers and we're going to want to make one specific for redstone or whatever. We'll probably get to that automation a little bit later because, yeah, there's just a lot of setup for automating uh, mechanisms specifically that's different from a lot of other machines. But yeah, we'll hold off on this one. I think what we're going to do for now, let's just pre-craft up a bunch of these things. So we need transistor. I will do... Oh, 16 should be enough for now. And then redstone, I think we need twice the amount until we get ourselves the machine that allows you to do more. I forget what it's called off the top of my head. But there's a way that you can compress the redstone and then you get like eight uses as opposed to one use out of it. Anyway... So this is doing its thing. We need four of those. And then was that all that we needed for the interface? I can't remember. Let's go back and take a look now. So interface next. Uh, Fluix dust. So yeah, we do need uh, another interface. So we're going to have to tell the system how to make Fluix dust. So I guess we need to do that. Uh, so the recipe for Fluix dust is a Fluix crystal equals a Fluix dust, and that's going to be in pretty much any single machine that can process that. So it doesn't really matter which one we do, but this does have to be set to a processing pattern for us to make it work. So we have one Fluix dust is made with one Fluix crystal. Now we need an interface to put that in and onto a machine, but in order for us to make those interfaces, we need these things. All right, you know what? We're going to grab these. We're going to make one interface for doing this part of it. Yeah, each little step is going to get us closer and closer to automation, that's for sure. So uh, let's put four of those in here. Oops, interface. So we are, oh, we need two additional Fluix dust. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and start crafting those up so we have those available. I guess this would be fine. We just need two of them. I'll let the rest of that cook up here. All right, so interface next. So things are happening. It happened. We made ourselves an interface. So that's awesome. So I think the next thing, oops, we need to get cable over here too. ME glass cable. All right, so I think the very first thing we should do, let's go ahead and automate our pulverizer. I don't know if this is going to be the permanent spot. We can always move this stuff. It's not like a huge issue if we leave it here, but we'll automate that. So that means we need to get some applied energistics coming down here. And let's also put the pattern in. So our pulverizer should be able to make this. Uh, we need to set the configuration options. So I'll do a shift left click to clear everything. So if we do that, it'll know to automatically push the items to the top into this interface. Uh, or an import bus on the back, this would also work. That would be extracting. But I guess since these machines can push pull, we'll just do that. Now, sometimes that can cause problems. I think we're going to be fine in this particular case. So we'll just leave it alone just like this. Yep, and we are pretty much automated now. So if I want to come over here and say craft some more Fluix dust, we have 30, but let's craft up two more just to make sure this thing's working correctly. And there we go. Fully automated. Very easy. All right. So now that we have that, we want to do another interface. And if I wanted to craft this, it is saying that we're missing our basic control circuits, which should be about done by now. So now once we have those, we should be able to start crafting up a few more interfaces and automating a few more things. Let's try this. Interface, craft it, do it. Awesome. Okay, so now we can do that. So this interface, we're going to place over here. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and get rid of this slightly larger chest. Get rid of you. Then I'll pop this off. Get rid of this. Okay. Now I don't remember how the back of this is set up. Let me just take a quick look. Okay, so the very back, we are pumping lava in. And on the bottom, we are extracting out... Uh, Okay, okay. So I 
think what we want to do here, we're going to get rid of this. And we're going to place the interface directly on top. Now we just need to run a keyboard over here to attach it to this one. Pretty sure that's all we need to do right now. Uh, but we don't have enough cable. Pro tip, don't vein mine applied energistics cabling. I was very certain that this cable was completely disconnected. I originally ran it through the center, like around the middle instead of the top here. I was convinced that it wasn't touching anything. And I went to vein mine and like vein mine pretty much every single cable around here. So I had to redo everything, replace the terminals and all of this stuff. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I was pretty certain that I looked at it and everything was disconnected. Nope. Anyway, so we now have this cable running along over here and then down to the bottom. It's got an interface on the bottom of our furnace. And this we have clicked here for the interface terminal to no longer show on the interface terminal because otherwise that's just going to say it's not connected to anything and you're not going to know where that interface is or whatever. So since we're just pushing items into it, we don't need to know about it on the terminal when we eventually make it. And then on the top here, yeah, we just put the interface directly on top of the Zenith furnace. So we should be pretty much good to go. All right. So now if we come up here and let's go and fill this in. All right. So now if we come up here and we put in our pattern, did I not have a pattern on me? Did I put it into here? I'm not sure. Pattern. Yeah, that's our conduit binder pattern. So if we put the conduit binder binder pattern in here, the system should now know how to create conduit binder. And we should, if we have all the materials, be able to make ourselves the conduit. So now enter conduit. If I tell it to make it, it knows how to do everything, except we are now missing these different items here. Crude steel, iron alloy, conductive iron ingots. I assume all of these are made in the alloy smelter. Uh, crude steel. Wait, is that what we're making? Crude steel? Yeah, crude steel. Crude steel alloy smelter recipe. Okay, so that's not bad. Cobblestone gravel clay. All right, so we got to make a pattern for that. So crude steel. This is... Uh, that's a processing pattern. And in the alloy smelter. So we're going to make one of those. All right, so the other thing that we were missing, or I guess other things, if we tell it to craft that, it still doesn't know how to make iron alloy. And the other one is conductive iron. Okay, so conductive iron is made in the alloy smelter using these items. Oops. Oh, I'm not on the thing anyway. So that is you or made using these items. Cool. And then the al iron alloy is made using those. All right. So we have to make ourselves one more interface. We should have everything in the system for that, I hope. All right. So one more interface made, and then this has to go over onto our alloy smelter, which I'm not really sure if you can attach an interface like that. I'm not sure if that's touching the block or not, to be completely honest. We might have to do that on the back. Um, I guess we can give this a try. Man, I need to get myself an axe in my inventory. Get that out of here. And I don't think we need this over here anymore. Okay, so that's there. And the simplest way to get these connected, but the ugliest way is to just run a keyboard over here, something like that. And I don't have enough of these colored ones. But I am kind of curious if this is going to work. So we can just throw these in here and see if these recipes appear in the system. So iron alloy should be something that we would see over here if that does work. And it looks like it knows how to craft it. Okay, so you can put it on top, even though there's like an air gap between the interface and the alloy smelter. It's really weird that you can do that. Uh, we also need a way for this thing to push the items back into that. Does this have a push pull? I can't set this to anything. It's got none on the top. So even though the interface recognizes this, or I guess the interface recognizes the patterns, it's not recognizing the block. Yeah, we can't put it like that, unfortunately. Okay, 
So we will do this, get rid of this, get rid of these keyboards because this is quite ugly and not the way I really wanted that set up. Uh, we can either do a full interface block on the back here, or we can set it to a cable interface, which will look nicer. So I think we'll do that. So we'll put it as a cable interface on the back. We'll set the configuration for this machine. Uh, we want this to be alloys only, but the configuration, this is gonna be set to push pull. Okay, so when it's done with the items, it should push it back into the interface here. And then, yeah, again, just to do this quick and dirty so we can get this going, I'll run these cables underground later. And then these guys go into here, awesome. So now, if we wanted to do those conduits, hopefully we have all the other materials ready to go. So if I wanted to do Ender Energy Conduit, can I do 10 of them? Okay, so we're missing clay and we're missing lead ingot. Really? All right, so we need to <laughs> change a recipe over here real quick. I didn't have this thing set up. Yeah, this one right here, this requires lead. I did not have this thing set up to use any type of lead like or dictionary. And I do that on purpose, but I didn't check to make sure that we had the item that's looking for. So we wanna swap that to this lead. Uh, iron alloy ingot, let me double check this. So, wait, no, not that one. Iron, yeah, lead, okay. So this had the wrong item in there. That actually had to be cobalt, I assume. Iron alloy, yeah, cobalt. I'm not sure why it had lead in there twice. But anyway, we should be able to do this now if I put that back over here. Unless I was looking at the wrong one. Shouldn't have been, okay. But we'll try this again, and hopefully it works this time. So one more time, conduit. This, 10, next. Okay, so now we just need the clay, and the clay we can do uh, very easily, like so, like so. We have all of the clay in there. All right, so now conduit, I've wanted to make 10 of these. All right, so it knows how to do everything, we just don't have enough storage space. So let's make a smaller recipe. Let's just do one. Uh, one is still not enough. <laughs> okay, uh, we need bigger crafting storage in order to do that. So can we do something like the energy conduit? Just one of those? We can do that. So if I start that up, we should see our furnace over here cooking things. Uh, did I? Okay, I must have made a mistake here. Yeah, I did not set this thing to input. All right, so that's all set. And it looks like we are crafting iron alloy ingots at the moment. I need to go double check that that is working. Doesn't look like things are happening over here. Oh, you know what? Yeah, this needs to go away as well. Uh, it does work, but it pushed the iron alloy ingots over into this barrel, which it should not have. So we'll put that into the system. So hopefully everything now should have completed and we have some conduits. Let's see. We have one aluminum, one iron, one crude, and we have four energy ones. Cool. So if I wanted to make these, is it going to allow me? It still doesn't allow me. It's too many different things uh, <laughs> for us to do that. So can we do the next tier up, the enhanced energy? We can make those. I guess we can look at this screen and see things being crafted. Awesome. And then if I wanted to make these, is it gonna allow me to do it? It will finally allow me to make those conduits. Okay, so we have some work to do in order to like really get things going here in Applied Energistics, but we are able to auto-craft these Ender Energy conduits at this point. Oh my goodness, guys. <laughs> kind of ridiculous, uh, but we are making progress. We have auto-crafting up and running now. We have P2Ps up and running. We have plenty of channels available. Now it's to make the system bigger and better and faster and all that kind of stuff. We are well on our way. Anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for this episode of Project Ozone 3. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Maybe you learned something about applied energistics. Maybe not. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you did like it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.